Hey guys, your boy Chili here. Welcome back to ROM hacking. Uh, in the last video, we did Magic Missile, and uh, I brought to your attention a couple of things. I had implemented the vision operator, getting it working for integers in C++, which I didn't have before. Before I had this divide function, I've reverted the code back to that state. Um, and I also showed you that there is a hardware divide in the CPU that we are targeting. So maybe we would like to use that. So the first thing is, well, like what led me to believe that there is no hardware divide? Let me show you. So if I just create this simple function here and I, I try to build it, the compiler is going to say no. Um, there's an undefined reference to some kind of internal function. You know it's internal because it's got the double underscore in there. div si3. So saying I can't find this function, which makes sense because I'm not linking to the standard library. Because I can't link to the standard library, to initialization the standard library is going to require memory that I don't have anywhere for it to work with. I can't use the battery backup SRAM like that because of the, the way the memory accesses work. Byte accesses broadcast to the high and low byte of the word. And so the standard library is not written to, to, to figure that out and it's gonna mess up. So I don't have anywhere to initialize the standard library, to initialize a heap or anything like that. Uh, so I can't link to it. So that means I can't use functions like this. Um, now, one question is, well, it can do, ed it doesn't need that for addition. It doesn't need that for multiplication, but divide is somehow special, and that led me to believe, well, maybe it just doesn't have a divide function. It's, it's not uncommon for processors not to have a divide, or sometimes even a multiply. Um, so I just thought, ah, I gotta implement it myself. Now, one thing I did try, because there's, there are multiple reasons why it could be trying to call a function to do a simple division. And one is that there is a standard about how mathematics should work, especially floating point, but maybe also integer about how it should behave. And if the processor doesn't behave exactly in that way, then it might need to call a function in order to fix up the behavior of the processor. That function might use the hardware divide instruction, but it needs to do extra stuff. And so I thought, well, maybe if I do a switch, because like in x86, let me just let me just bring one up example for you. So in x86, there's like an option for floating point model and you can be precise, strict, or fast. And so being like strict is probably you have to follow the standard exactly. You will get the standard behavior from the C++ standard. Um, but that means that you will not be as fast. So it might have to call into a function that does a bunch of stuff. Whereas if you just choose fast, it can just emit the instruction directly. So I thought maybe I could find a switch like this, but for the M68K. But try as I might, I could not find that switch, and so I just assumed that the instruction doesn't even exist, and I just implemented a software algorithm, and when I say I implemented it, I mean I got ChatGPT to implement it. But you know, it's, it's basic things, it's a very known quantity that you can do these operations by shifting and simple arithmetic. So I implemented it, it works fine. The code isn't as sexy as if I were to use and but it, it works. Now what I realize, I realize two things. This is things I've thought for a little while. Uh, thing number one, if I implement this internal function myself, if I provide my own implementation, then I could use the division operator directly and I don't have to call it as a function, which just makes the code look a little nicer. Uh, so one thing is I could implement this function myself. The other thing is that I realized there is a division instruction. It does exist. And so I could use that and that would most likely be faster than doing this looping operation, which is probably on the order of the number of bits in the, um, in the operands because it's shifting bits. So the loop is going to last for as long as there are bits in the number. And so let me show you how how this is accomplished. All right, so let's take a look at how I implement these compiler C runtime, you know, semi-internal functions. So the first thing you note is that there's two of them. So this is the one that came up in the example I showed you before that is a signed version. There's also an unsigned version. Uh, they both work on integer size, so 32 bits. There are no versions that work on 16 or 8 bits. 
That's actually a little annoying, but it is what it is. Now, the second thing you notice is this extern C. And this is what tripped me up to begin with. When I tried to implement these myself, it just it didn't work. The, the compiler didn't seem to pick them up. And the reason is, is because you, you can't have a mangled name. So you got to declare it as extern C. And uh, this one, chat GPT helped me out in because I, I got the general idea of how I could implement it. But I just I was missing this one piece. And when I asked chat GPT, it did it spit out a function with extern C. I was like, ah, aha, I see it now. In retrospect, it makes a lot of sense, but it didn't occur to me at the time. Now, mainly my focus is going to be on the unsigned version because I'm not, I don't do any signed division. So this is, I just implemented it for completeness sake, but it's probably never going to be used, let's be honest. So if we're going to look at how to implement this, we have to look at the actual behavior of the division function itself. It's very important. Uh, signed, unsigned divide. So there's two versions. And what it, the way it works is you uh, divide the destination by the source and you store the result in the destination. But what is the result? You might think that's, you know, it's like if it's 4 divided by 2, the result is 2. But here's the thing. The result is actually, you get two results. You get the quotient and the remainder. And so you get 16-bit quotient and 16-bit remainder packed together in the destination register. So that's very important. And the source, the thing that you're dividing by, or that you're dividing with, the divisor, 16 bits. So you can only divide with a 16 bit. You can divide into a 32 bit value, but you divide with a 16 bit. So already we're seeing, ah, this, this instruction's got a few corners on it, a few corners that could create some cases for us. Uh, and one little implication that doesn't take a lot to realize is that, well, if you're dividing a 32-bit number by a 16-bit number and the result is going into 16 bits, it could be possible that your result doesn't fit in 16 bits. Divide a million by one. The result is greater than you can represent in 16 bits. So we have to check a bunch of cases and decide how we're gonna live our life. And that's what I'm doing here. So the first thing I do is I gotta, I gotta make sure that the divisor is 16-bit. Otherwise, I can't use this instruction directly. So B, which is the divisor, has to be less than this value. And also, here's the, here's the thing, the, the high word of A has to be less than B. If it's greater than B, then when you perform the division, the result is going to be greater than 16 bits. And again, we're going to have an overflow. And the result of the division is not going to be valid. So we check these two cases. And this is going to be the majority, if not all, of the division that I ever do is going to satisfy this. And when it does, we emit a division instruction that divides... A, which goes into here, by B, which goes into here. And the way this inline assembly works is we specify, okay, so what things are going to be output? What C slash C++ things are going to be output by this inline assembly? Well, it's outputting A. It's taking in A and B. And this is what registers get, extra registers get clobbered. And I don't specify any specific registers, so that's empty. And then I have to mask out the uh, the top 16 bits because that's the remainder and we don't want that and then we would just return now if we get any case where it does not satisfy you know these conditions I just fall back to my soft divide because this works for any two unsigned integers and and then we're good to go now like I said in reality we're always going to be hitting this case here and using this instruction but just to be safe we fall back here. Now, what about signed division? Well, signed is different. We have a, an instruction to do signed division, but again, we'd have to do a bunch of tests. And I was too lazy to figure out the tests for the case when it can be negative or positive. So I just said, okay, so first signed, we're just going to call into the unsigned version. So if any of these are negative, we make them positive so that both are positive. We store them in unsigned int values, and then we perform the division with unsigned int. And I record if they're if both are negative, then the result is going to be positive. If only one is negative, the result is negative. If they're both positive, the result is positive. That logic is handled in here. And so, yeah, we're just basically delegating to the unsigned version with some fix-up for signed.
And, you know, like I said, I could, you know, implement this directly with the sign division and maybe save a few cycles. And I could also implement this division. So if I'm dividing by, for example, a 32-bit value, I could implement this using the assembly instruction and do a long division. I could basically do it in two divides and that might save a little over, you know, running this function. But rule number one of a programmer is don't waste time doing shit that doesn't matter. And since my only ever division cases go, they all satisfy this condition already, I'm not going to waste time trying to optimize stuff that is probably never going to be used or only be used very rarely. I still cover my ass, I still cover my bases, I make sure it's correct in all the scenarios, it'll give a good result, because I might, it might happen in an unexpected place and, you know, screw me over. So I make sure it's correct, but I optimize only the things that matter. And once I implement these two, then down here, I'm able to, you know, replace these divide calls with just actual division operator, and things get cleaner. And it's also going to run faster, because all of these cases, they all, you know, hit the result, they all hit the case where it's able to use the di division instruction You're down here as well. Now, I ran my code through ChatGPT and it said, you gave me some, ex you know, some ideas on what I could do better. I should check divide by zero and, you know, do something like throw an exception or in my case, I'm just going to return zero. Dividing by zero just gives you a result of zero and that's just what, it, that's just what it's going to be. The other thing is I can improve the constraints here. So before it was just always register, register, register. But now I'm saying, yeah, the divisor could be a register or it could be memory or it could be immediate. So giving the compiler more free range to optimize this, saying we actually do clobber the carry condition register and all those condition flags. And just saying that this should match this here. Input and output should match the register being used. And that's that. There's nothing much. There's just some ex there's some stuff that the chat GPT suggested, and I figured that yeah, makes sense. Actually, since I'm doing a divide by zero check here, I could probably remove that from here. Uh, maybe I'll do that. But one very interesting thing. So let's take a look at, for example, do magic missile. Uh, well, I gotta go back into my code here. So in do magic missile, we're dividing by five, just dividing by a constant value. If I check my uh, my listing. So we see here it's putting a 5 on the stack, it's loading the level of the character, putting that on the stack, and then it's calling the divide function, uh, which is what you would expect. Alright, now let's actually try out the magic missile. And we're gonna, we're gonna break. Alright, so we uh, hit the break point at our thunk, I'm gonna step over. And we are going to see, yeah, it's loading the level. Uh, level is 2. That's the low nibble in D2. Let's set the level to 13. Uh, well, let's set it to 12. So that would be do D2 is equal to OXC. Okay. So the level is now 12. Um, and right away we see... There is no function call in here for divide. And there is no div u instruction. They do a, an unsigned multiply by this, you know, very large number here. And then they do some shifting and some adding. What the heck is that? Well, actually this adding is just doubling the number of dice rolled. So that's that's uh, this is all just normal. These instructions in here, these four multiply swap and logical shift right these end up as divide by five so this is an insane is an, a pretty hardcore optimization at the instruction level that the compiler could implement even after i supplied it with the inline assembly saying no specifically use div u the compiler said no no i got a way faster way to divide by five let me just do this shit and and there you have it it works perfect well, I mean, let's 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 uh, let's see. So level is set to twelve. We multiply, clear the low, swap, shift, and two. Right, twelve divided by five is two. There you go, and that should hit for massive damage. 
20. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty good. We just rolled five dice plus five. Five D6 plus five. So right away we see here that just because we supplied this um, implementation in a function, uh, I think the compiler can still ignore that and do whatever the hell it wants. It, it just requires that function to be present. Uh, and I'm not sure at what level. Like, does it do the function? Does it do all the... Um, substitution of the assembly instructions and then optimize at the assembly level? Or does it look at a higher level and say, you're doing a division here, I don't have to call that function, I can do something else? I don't know. It's interesting, but in any case, I like it. I like what it's doing. C++ compiler stays winning. Let's try one more time. We're going to set a breakpoint at a different place where the experience gets shared out. So in that case, you're not dividing by a constant, you're dividing by the number of a living party members. So that's a runtime number, and that might change the way the optimizer deals with the division. So let's just do this. We're going to hit you. We're going to hit our breakpoint. We're going to make sure that this results in a kill. So after loading D2, we're going to do D2 is equal to OXF, level 15. So that'll let us roll seven dice. Then we are going to continue. I think D2, is, yeah, that's right. Boom, 35. Now we hit the breakpoint for sharing experience. I'm gonna jump into here. And here, I believe we are actually jumping to the function, in this case, that does the, uh, the whatchamacallit, the division. So I'm pretty sure that this is gonna be the divide function. We're taking our parameters off the stack. Now we compare to see if the divisor is 16-bit. Now we check to compare the divisor to the high of the uh, dividend. And then we do some... Oh, this is where we're comparing the high one. And if we branch high, okay. Now we're going to do our divide. Divide 1. Divide 0 by 1. So D0 is the experience, which is A28. That's that's a quite a bit of experience. And we're dividing by four, which is the number of characters in the party. So here we can see when we don't divide by a fixed constant value, it basically just directly calls my function, doesn't inline it or anything. And that's fine. That's still way faster than what we had before doing the software routine in the loop. It's good stuff. And there you have it, a little bit of a different video here. No, we didn't really spend any time in Ghidra. We were just working on our C++ code alone, and we managed to improve it. We, we enabled the use of dividing integers. Um, basically, instead of hacking the ROM, we're hacking the compiler. And uh, the results, as you can see, are pretty nice. And honestly, I think this basically wraps it up for version 2 of the patch. So I might be releasing patch version soon, and then I might also uh, be trying another playthrough with all these changes implemented, and we'll see how it goes. So I don't know exactly when a new video in this playlist will come out. I guess there'll probably be one just announcing the release of version 2. Um, but after that short one, maybe there'll be a little bit of a lull in this hacking stuff. But there will be some periodic videos of me playing through the game, and we'll see how it goes how far I get before I decide I need to make more changes. I need to hack more. Jesse, we need to cook. Anyways, until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please get the like button. Helps a lot. And I will see you again with some more Genesis ROM hacking.